Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to teach you how to get the Spirit Ashes Lehutel the Headless, which is the best Spirit Ashes summon in the entire game, and let me tell you why. This summon not only has one of the highest, most aggressive, most evasive, most tankiest, it, it's a perfect package. It's tanky, it deals tons of damage, it has an enchant on its weapon, it stacks up the automatic death effect on most mobs, it even works on some bosses. And it's highly elusive and evasive, it, it literally just vanishes in the air and will teleport next to people. Literally the teleports behind you nothing personnel kiddo meme. It is extremely high DPS, even at level 1. It's super duper hard to kill. It, it can take hits like a champion. It also has ranged attacks. It is great at getting aggro from bosses. Now, there are two summons that beat it out. The Mimic tier does have more damage, but it has so much less survivability. And the five Great Shield summon tend to last a little bit longer, so they are slightly more tanky. But those things get cleaved and AoE'd so damn easy, but this one, its AI is just superior to all other Spirit Ash summons in the game, and it's super easy to get. You can get it at the very, very start of the game. So, let me show you how to get here, and I'm going to show you how to find the dungeon and how to beat the dungeon, alright? That's what this video is all about. So, what you're going to need to do is, at some point, you're going to have to just go south on the map, uh, here at Ag Hill Lake South, you just cross this bridge here, and if you want to know how to get here, here's the start of the game, the first step. This is right when you open those big doors and you're introduced to the entire world. You just go southeast, nothing to it, grab this uh, grace, then you go southeast to this bridge. Now this bridge is guarded by one, like, kind of ballista thingy, so just weave left and right and it won't hit you. Grab this grace, continue along the road south. Alright, continue along the road south, and you will see a grace on your left. Grab that, then get back on the road, head north, but take the left fork. It's kind of a dirt road, and you're going to follow it along the path here. You'll see this grace very easily. Now, this is where it gets more complicated, so I'm going to show you how to find this dungeon. The dungeon is right about here, and it has a grace, so it makes it real easy. And we're going to use this video later to show you a wrong warp that involves coming down here, so it's important to do this. Even if you want to play like a no summoning run or something for whatever reason, you still want to get these graces, okay? So from this grace site, which is called South of Lookout Tower, we are going to mount up and we're going to head west, okay? So right from the grace, I'm just hugging this, this stone wall, alright? I'm just going to hug the stone wall, continue west, and you'll see a bridge. I'm going to smash this and grab the, the root inside. Um, to smash it, you just run it over the horse. Alright, so here's the bridge, and there's like a little monster there. Don't worry about it, we're mounted, you know, he can't catch us. Cross the bridge, okay? And you're gonna see a big stone wall in front of you. We're just gonna follow along that stone wall until it loops around, and then we're gonna be on- we're gonna climb on top of it, essentially. I tried all manner of using that spirit jump to try to get up here, and it was really, like, frame perfect. Not worth the time. Don't- don't go for speedrun strats, just do it normally. It'll save you time in the longer run. So, now that we can see that this stone wall is ending, we're gonna- we're gonna climb it now, and we're going to face directly south after getting up here on this wall. You see this little art- this stone archway ahead? That's where we need to be. So you see the big tree, and then to the right of the tree, you see the stone archway kind of- kind of like- there's something going on here, right? So you're gonna ride up to it, but if you look down, there's a little doorway here. It's kinda hidden. It's a nice little hidden doorway. And we are going to go inside. You can't use your mountain here because it is a dungeon. And this is one of the easier dungeons. Now, before you actually proceed through the dungeon, there are uh, some things that you're going to want to do. Because you have to kill a boss. Now, this boss is very easy. This boss only has 1,000 HP. Alright, but you will need a great shield of some sort. Preferably with 100% physical mitigation and as high guard boost as possible. Now, I do have a video that is on my channel on how to get this Manor Tower Shield, which, in my opinion, is one of the easiest great shields to get in the game. It is absolutely vital for this run. You can get it after beating uh, the very first boss of the game. And uh, let me just show you real quick on the screen how you can get this for yourself, if I can find it. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. The best early game shield ever... Here we go. I'm going to put it up on the screen right now for you. Okay. 
it looks it's gonna look like this there will be a link in the description to this video it's called the best early game shield in elder ring manor tower shield all right so just go into the into the description click that video if you want to learn how to get it. it's super super easy to get and it's something that i highly recommend for the, this boss if you're like an elden ring god you don't you don't need a shield but the, the way this boss works is he's basically just a sword blender he's gonna get in your face and he's gonna hit you 10 million times with swords and you're just gonna die so I highly recommend some sort of great shield to handle him. So now to proceed with the second part of this video is how to navigate through this dungeon and beat the puzzles and get the boss to get the spirit ashes. Now I also forgot to mention along with the shield you want some sort of thrusting weapon so you want a thrusting sword or a spear, a great spear, a great thrusting uh, sword because what that allows you to do is you can hold block while attacking and this is how you're going to easily beat the boss. So let's get started with the dungeon. You're going to head downstairs. Now right away you're going to see a mist wall and a stone sword key. The only reward inside here is what's called a Rancor Pot. This is a jar that you can throw on the ground and it will shatter into a bunch of little spirits that will home in and attack enemies. It's not very powerful. It's not worth getting. So we're going to head left and down the tunnel. You'll see the door. We're going to go through the dungeon to open this door. All right. And uh, it's pretty simple how to open it, but um, there's just mostly skeleton mobs. Make sure you pick up these little flowers. These are called Grave Glowwort. That's how we upgrade um, our spirit summons. And their skeletons are going to hit you with swords and knives and all sorts of manner of things. There's really not any good loot in this dungeon other than the uh, Glowwort. Um, you can avoid the skeletons, just kind of run around them. And uh, we are going to grab all the flowers we can. Now, in this hallway is the flame turret okay this uh there's two ways to beat this you can shoot an arrow at it or you can run in between the fire and dive to the right here there is a little safety hole okay that's going to kill the skeletons following us and uh, we're going to go to the right again where there's no fire now we're going to disable the turret by stabbing it or just hitting it with anything that disables the turret that's pretty simple right so now we're going to continue forward here get this uh glow wart because that's what we really want okay and then we're also going to loot uh, the Prattling Prate. For those that don't know, Prattling Prate is a item that you can use to say words. In this case, when I use that item, it'll say thank you. So to, we're going to reactivate the turret and jump on it. That's going to take us up. We're going to jump up here. I'm actually going to take care of this little grenade tossing skeleton. Now, the way skeletons work in this game is uh, they revive if you don't kill them in their dead state. So we're going to hit him again, and now he is dead. And there we go. Also, these skeletons are going to be just jumping into fire and dying, so that's why we're not really fighting any of them. All right, so now that we're up here, uh, we are free to, to open the switch now. And make sure that you grab, just, just grab the plants. The plants are the, the real stars of the show here. All right, there's not really much else to look forward to or do in this dungeon. We're going to grab this, this flower, and we're just going to leave the skeleton, just leave them be, right? Up ahead is the switch that we need. All right, so we're going to flip the switch. Ta-da! Grab the plant. This is a very, very easy dungeon. And I missed the plant, but it's okay. That's not like a rare plant, okay? So we're going to go back towards um, this way. Now, if I went up, that's back towards the dungeon entrance. If you, if you need to refresh your flasks, you can. I've actually taken a wrong turn here. Again, skeletons are slow mobs. They're not very coordinated. Don't worry about them. Just run past them. It's fine. All right. Now we're going to go back. Sorry, I did take that wrong turn. That's okay, though. Again, more skeletons. We can reset all of them by resting at the graves if we want. Or we can go straight to the boss room. It's fine. There's the boss room. I'm going to rest at the graves because that's what most players will do. All right. The graves is right up here. So we are now back at the start of the dungeon. Because we flipped that switch, we are all good to go for the boss room. All right. So I, I, have, I am now rested. I've got all my charges back. And uh, you don't have to buff up for this boss fight. I'm not going to use any buffs or summons. I'm just going to show you how easy it is. As long as you have this great shield. Okay? Because you, you can really prepare for this fight. You can use a ranged attack. There's so many different ways to beat this thing. But it, it, it's basically just a high DPS, very low defense, low HP mob. And it teleports. I'm going to lock onto it right away. I'm going to hold my shield out. I'm blocking currently. I'm going to walk towards it. It's going to teleport into me and start swinging like crazy. I'm just going to start stabbing. Okay? I'm just I'm just stabbing. And it might break my guard here. And it broke my guard. That's fine. It took... See how much damage that did? So... But whenever I block, it bounces off. So I'm able to just block and stab it. And this takes care of the Cemetery Shade, giving us 
Lehutel the Headless, okay? And because we got all those plants in this dungeon, we can use one of those to upgrade this to level 2 immediately if you want to. But I think that you should test this out for yourself to see just how effective it is at combat. And um, if you want, I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of how elusive it is and how it fights. So now I'm going to go to the Church of Ella, and I'm going to demonstrate it against the Tree Sentinel. But I'm also going to let it fight against a giant, which the giant actually is more dangerous. And I did, I'm not wearing gloves for some reason. Let me. Oh, that overloads me. That's why. I, yeah, I'm going to take that off. Yeah, I need more uh, endurance to wear gloves, guys. Okay, so we're going to swamp out the Lone Wolf Ashes, which we get at the start of the game for the... The Hotel of the Headless, and um, apparently this character does not have enough FP to cast it. But I have a, I have another character um, who does have enough FP to cast it, uh, so that is something to look out for. I only have 100 FP with Mind level 20, so um, I'll be right back and I'm going to get on an alt character so I can show you guys just how awesome these summons are, and compare them to other ones too. And do believe me when I say that this is the best summon so far in the early game. I haven't experienced the late game summons, but I have experimented with like all of these, right? I thought that this Mad Pumpkin Head would be cool because he has a special ability that I didn't find on any wiki that if something bleeds around him, he like freaks out and goes berserk. But the damage is so crappy. He's such a big and easy dumb target. He's just an awful summon. The, the Mimic tier is great because it copies your build and there's also a stray dog that gives rot. But, well, my sword gives rot, so I don't really need the dog. Anyway, let's summon Lahutul the Headless. This is the smartest AI I have found so far in the game. Look, it, it teleports, it dodges, it disappears. It's tanky. Look, it, it has a huge health pool. All right, it throws spears, but it also... Uh, that, see that enchant on its spear? It, um, it, it, it can apply the automatic death effect. And it's got huge damage, right? Like, this is just level 1 unupgraded. It teleports away from danger. It'll teleport to danger. Um, I think if you soup this bad boy up and play a support build, that you could just keep this summon healed and it will solo the entire game for you. Alright? But, um, you know, I can't really make that claim until I've actually done it, okay? But that, it would be something fun to try, right? So, look at it. Look at it go. It, it's still surviving. It's still beating on the Tree Sentinel. It's about half HP. Now this one, this one's not doing so good. This one's actually getting beat up pretty bad. Um, I've seen this summon get Tree Sentinel down to about half HP, okay? But um, if I share any other summon with you, they're all going to do way, way worse on the Tree Sentinel than this thing, okay? The only thing that beats this summon in DPS is the Mimic tier, if you set it up correctly. And the only thing that beats it in tankiness and survi bleh, survivability is the five great shield summons which you have to use a wrong warp to do or beat a very hard boss to even have access to but this summon you can access it at the very start of the game it is absolutely crazy powerful um but yeah that's how to get lehutil the headless absolute must have summon go get it start leveling it up this thing is just a beast it's a monster it tears through everything it is awesome okay um, the Skeletal Militia Man, they just get killed, like, they get aggro even when they're dead and reviving. The Wolves have low HP and are easy to kill. Uh, the Rotten st Stray Ashes gives rot. We don't need that for our build. The Spirit Jellyfish is absolutely terrible. It's supposed to poison, but it never attacks fast enough to stack it, and it dies so easy. The, the Imps are really actually good for early game. They apply bleed and range damage, but they, they, they die. They don't do a lot of damage. The Great Shield Soldiers... You have to use a wrong warp exploit to get too early on. And uh, they're very tanky and they're very good at stagger. Like, this would be my second choice. If you play a wizard character, this actually might be a better choice for you. Uh, the Mad Pumpkin Heads, he's too big, he does no damage. He's uh, inconsistent. This thing does no damage. These guys do no damage. They miss all their attacks. This guy just has a low HP pool and dies. This is the Chad the King the absolute ruler, even though it's a female summon, uh, it says so in the description. Um, so it's uh, Stacy, I guess, uh, of all summons. This thing is, you want to go get this right now, and you want to use this on every boss and every hard zone there is. And then the Mimic tier, it copies your build, so if you have a god tier build, uh, however, it doesn't scale. Um, like, I, I have a wizard character, and I summon this thing, and it casts spells, but it doesn't deal nearly as much damage as my main character, obviously. So you want, this is more for melee builds. It will out DPS the headless uh, Lahutal, but it, it doesn't have nearly as big of an HP pool, alright? So you definitely want to go for this one. It is absolutely worth it. 
Guys, I'm Soul Bindi. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. And I got my chunky boy here. Look at his, look at his little jiggle. His little gut jiggle. It's power belly. And uh, leave a like, leave a subscribe, man. Leave some comments. Comment on other people's comments. And if you are financially good and you want to support me for showing you this cool stuff, then uh, you can become a channel member. It is $5 a month. It's like being a Twitch subscriber, but on YouTube. It'll give you access to private, more personal videos. And if I play an MMORPG or multiplayer game, or there's just something too good to show to the public, you know, so it doesn't get fixed, then I will definitely post it for members only. Uh, so look out for that stuff. Don't just sub don't just be a channel member for the exploit videos. You know, do it because you like me and you want to help me out. And I, again, I appreciate you guys so much. I make videos every day here on the Soul Benji channel. So come back tomorrow for another Elden Ring video, and I will see you then. Take care.